Good day, all. I Rapstein with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up, and this wrap up is for Wednesday, and we're at the fifth of April, two thousand and twenty-three. Well, it felt like today was a lot worse than it was. They really tried to break a lot of the stock indices, as you can see. You took the QQQ from three nineteen, the high today, back down to three fourteen, finished just off the low, but the Dow stayed stronger all day. SPY, they tried to break, it settled. Um, Close to mid-session, I'd say it a little bit more to the upside. Healthcare was the strong goers today, but you got to remember what we're dealing with right now. And what we're dealing with is a market that is starting to see wobbles. That's the word with W, wobbles, in the uh, jobs part of the service sector industry. We've already been weak in manufacturing and the like. We've seen that. Now we're starting to see from the JOLT report, we're starting to see from ADP's numbers that came in today in the private placement. Uh, the market's now down into the 140s, going way back from the 240s, the 300,000 range. You remember that? I think we had a 500,000 number. Do you remember that one? So you've had all these crazy numbers that have come in, and now things are coming back down. So we're going to end up the week looking at the granddaddy report, the jobs report. We're uh, in between then going to get unemployment claims tomorrow. Those will be important to see. Are we starting to see them jump away or what is going to go on there? And that's what I think you focus on. Do remember that Friday's report comes out with a stock market that is not open because of Good Friday. So it's not an international holiday. It's, it's one of the, these holidays that the markets, the exchanges do close, but yet there's economic data coming out. It doesn't seem right to me. Um, if I don't think the importance, I, I think, frankly, they should have delayed the report until Monday to let all traders see it because it throws things off. In any case, they didn't, so we'll take it from there. If you look at Schlumberger, as I told you, I thought this was going to try to fill this gap. It's missed it by a little. I don't know that it has to go any further. You know, markets often try to do that. It's not an island gap or anything. It didn't do anything crazy in there. So it's tried to fill it. I expected that. Now the question is, what's the next step? So far, the trend is up. Higher lows, higher highs. So for me, as long as the market doesn't take out 48.62, the market is in an uptrend. If the market pulls back to fill the gap and gets down here to 47.82, that'd be problematic. You would break the uptrend. What stopped the rally is the first challenge of the 100-day average in the market and the Bollinger Band. You can see that just crystal clear. If you haven't taken my enhanced Bollinger Band course, please do yourself a favor and get that course. This is the kind of market, it's market upon market, where you're hitting Bollinger Bands, you're wondering what is stopping the market from rallying or breaking, and it's staring you in the face. It's right there. Go with it. Go with the flow of it. I'll show you at the end of the uh, of this, the Enhanced Bollinger Band course. Please take a good hard look at it. All right. When we take a look at where the market's at in terms of momentum, a bit overbought. I consider any reading with either of these numbers over 70. Now, you're backing off today. As you can see, we're overbought yesterday. But here's my dilemma. Let's assume that you want to step in and buy this market. You got a 69.82 reading. You're going to be overbought if you go up at all. That becomes the dilemma for me. Resistance here. I'm not seeing anything that I'd want to come in on this market at just yet. Schwab is having problem because we're still hearing other banks are having issues. People are looking hard at bank balance sheets, the amount of deposits that they have. It's spreading. People are looking hard. And this is a problem. You know, uh, TD Bank, they're at Toronto Dominion. They're having a big problem, too. People are looking at theirs. Schwab can't get out of its way of itself. Now that it hit its Bollinger Band, it has hit for me the area where, because you're not embedded, because you're down there, I would tell my clients cover shorts at this point in time if they were in it. We put this up here because I thought that was going to happen. It finally did. So... Ring the bell. I'm very happy with that. In UGA, you know how bullish I am gasoline. And these are new highs. Take a look on this. This new high is on the move. I told you this market would go. I did not expect 
that what would happen was OPEC would come in and cut world production down dramatically, the supply they're going to put out there. That immediately tightens up everything else. And in the U.S., if you've been looking at the EIA and the API numbers, you're seeing big draws of gasoline already. This is earlier than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be another two weeks. It's here. So on breaks in the market, you're embedding, you want to take a hard look. I'll be covering this in my daily morning uh, subscriber videos, both on the uh, morning uh, for the ETFs and the stocks and for the futures, because I do think it's an exciting trade. In Tesla, just nothing but problems right now. Market's really caught in sideways action more than anything. If you take a good hard look, you can see you came from the lowest point, the Bollinger Band and the 100-day average, up to the upper Bollinger Band and just plain sank back. If that's going down because ARC owns so many Kathy Woods, she'll probably be down in her fun. When we look at the financial services, they held up much better than I thought. You had the bear market rally, and why is it a bear market rally? Well, it's a bear market rally because when a market is underneath as it was here, the 18-day average, you first make runs towards it. I admit, you got over this a few days. Is the market bullish now? Yes, in the sense, higher lows, higher highs, bias up, but you're very overbought. Therefore, my work just goes neutral and says there's nothing there. In the industrial sector, we had this big, huge rally that carried to both the 100-day and the Bollinger Band stopped. Again, I'm going to tell you, look at where these markets are stopping. These Bollinger Bands are in play in a major way in these markets right now. At times, they take on more importance than others. They're on a scale of 1 to 10, a 10 in importance, in my opinion. Take a look at Sox. You don't think that this market peaked out there and has come back down in a hard way, got overbought, hit the band. The pros came out of that market. In the home builders, you went to the upper Bollinger Band. Boom. You stopped like that. If you go to the lower band, that expected to stop down there. I still like what I'm seeing. And I do realize if you, if you took a look at the MBA numbers, the mortgage association numbers, you saw in all categories today, the consumer backed off. However, interest rates have been falling. You realize three, four weeks ago, I was here and I'm telling you, why would you take risks in some of these markets? You can go into a two-year note, get 5%. Now, a month later, you're sitting at 3.7 and a fraction percent on that same note, okay? So windows open, you take advantage. Well, what's happening is these yields fall, and I don't think they're going back up dramatically any longer. I think that now that we're wobbling, and if we can get this really locked in in the service sector, I think that interest rates will look forward, and the back end will drop. They're not going to go up anymore. The front end, I'm not betting on against that six-month rate. Why? Because the Fed's tool is to keep that one going. The two-year can divert can divert from it just a little bit. You, you see that happen at times, and I wouldn't uh, be surprised at that. So I'm going to look for the support to come in here and see if this market gets back over that 18-day average. That would be the first sign that the market maybe, just maybe, is getting in line here to do a little bit of buying in those type of builders. In the energy sector, well, with what OPEC did, up and away, the battlegrounds, the 100-day average in the upper Bollinger Band. You are overbought. I don't think you're attracting new buying. You'll have a problem if you take out the lows of Tuesday. If you take out yesterday's lows, then I could see the market wanting to back off a little bit. Do I think there could be a big break in this market? I don't see how when you're taken out uh, of the market, in theory at least, somewhere between a million one and a million six barrels a day very shortly from the marketplace. That makes it hard. In the gold, where's the Bollinger Band? You hear me talking about this over and over. Before I go too far, I always want to remind you, do me a favor if you would, give a click down with the thumbs up. It helps our ratings here. I appreciate that. In SLV, yesterday I told my clients, bye, bye, and I'm not sorry. Okay, if it goes higher, it goes higher. That was the, the right play at the time. It was a heck of a trade, by the way. In the copper market, we've had an uptrend that went through there. Now, as I pointed out to you each day, the futures are in a different world than the COPX. When you look at the COPX, the copper ETF, it looks friendly. 
When you go to the copper futures, they don't. They're, they're more in the bear camp. Something's got to give in one of the two. TLT, what do you do when you get to the Bollinger Band and you're not embedded? UUP, what do you do when you get down to the Bollinger Band? How many times am I saying it in this uh, uh, video? What do you do? There's short covering hitting the market in that zone. And in FXC, you never did get up to it. Now, in FXC, you're embedded. I think that uh, much more of a break here is going to be a buying opportunity in this market. I'll cover that in the morning subscriber video. I put those out at 9 in the morning for my subscribers. And by the way, if when you watch me here on YouTube, I don't know if you're aware of it, but we have a join button. You can give that a click. A lot of you don't want to go to the website and join in. You might want to take a subscription there. You'll be able to come in and see all our different videos. So you can see that right on that page where it says join. So you put it together. You come up with the game plan. You see the importance of the Bollinger Bands. Take a look at this and do yourself a favor. Invest in you, not me. Invest in you. Learn how to work with Bollinger Bands with momentum. Have a good night. Welcome. I'm Ira Epstein, and I'm here to talk about my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Now, many of you have taken my regular charting course, and if not, you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know, Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. And on a chart, it will offer on the top part resistance, on the bottom support, and the ideas the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches onto that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that mine do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.